Hi, my name is John Doucette. I'm a PhD student at the University of British Columbia. I'm at the UBC MRI Research Center in the Department of Physics and Astronomy. And today I'm going to talk to you about calling Julia from MATLAB using my new package mattdamon.jl. So to start, let's talk about some motivation and about MATLAB. So MATLAB is a proprietary programming language. It's popular for scientific computing. In my fields of research, magnetic resonance imaging, it's extremely ubiquitous. It's popular amongst almost every lab. It's been used for years and there's large legacy code bases built up over these years. And nowadays it's extremely popular to start looking to open source alternatives to MATLAB, especially due to the expensive licensing and so on. It's nice to move to open source and Julia is in some sense the perfect open source alternative to MATLAB. It is strong in the same areas that MATLAB is in terms of uh, numerical computing and optimization, machine learning, and uh, built-in linear algebra capabilities with the linear algebra package and external libraries such as FFTW, which is extremely important for MRI, and CUDA for GPU use, and so on. So Julia is a really good alternative to MATLAB and a language that MATLAB users might want to switch to. However, suppose you do want to make this switch to Julia. How should you translate your MATLAB code base? I would argue that modularity is extremely important. So you don't want to take a gigantic code base and translate it all at once. That's not uh, efficient or scalable or, you know, it's error prone, of course. So you want to do things like take components that are isolated, translate them and test as you go. So you want to do this modularly. And in doing so, interoperability is extremely convenient. So if you can take your MATLAB system as it is, swap out one part for Julia and without too much overhead, and too much inconvenience, call out to Julia for that part and then keep going in your MATLAB routine. It makes it way easier to slowly switch over rather than all at once trying to get it done, which is, will be bug ridden and so on. So interoperability would be very nice. So what's the current state of MATLAB and Julia interoperability? Well, calling MATLAB from Julia has worked extremely well for quite a long time. So matlab.jl is an excellent package that I highly recommend. You can call MATLAB using the or, uh, C API directly from Julia using C calls in Julia. So this is extremely reliable and robust. And just from personal experience, I've used this package for probably over five years now, and I've never had any problems. It across Julia versions and MATLAB versions. It's very robust. Unfortunately, in the other direction, it's it's much more difficult. So one of the things that you first might try to do that would be ideal in some sense is what mex.jl does. So you take Julia and you embed the Julia runtime into a MATLAB executable, or mex for short, using MATLAB C++ API. So if this can work, it's very convenient, it's low overhead, you just build Julia right into the, the Julia runtime right into an executable that's just called from MATLAB. Unfortunately, it's really high developer cost to maintain. There's MEX, which is notoriously fragile between MATLAB versions and across architectures. It's very hard to get these things working uh, reliably. And in fact, currently for more or less this reason, MEX.jl supports only Julia version 1.5, which is also some problems with Julia and the C++ interaction because Julia and C++ have had a, a, an on and off relationship over the years. It's sometimes working really well and then the version changes and the packages aren't supported anymore and uh, somebody needs to keep up with it. So it's it's really, you're sort of chasing two different goalposts at the same time with the next changing and the Julia C++ support changing. And so what we chose to do with mattdaemon.jl is go for simplicity. We just want to do uh, the simplest thing possible that will just at least work across Julia and MATLAB versions. And for that, we chose communicating via IO. So input and output arguments are simply written to disk as MAT files. And we found that this has been extremely reliable across Julia and MATLAB versions. Of course, it does come at the cost of some performance compared to an approach like mex.jl, which compiles the Julia runtime directly. But it works and it's very convenient when you're just translating these large monolithic code bases anyways that don't spend too much time in one given function call. In fact, some of this overhead can be 
rather drastically alleviated using daemon mode.jl. So this is hence where the name of my package comes from. So daemon mode allows you to run a persistent Julia daemon in the background. So you can start up Julia in the background and have it running for you. And you can alleviate Julia startup and package load time. You can just do those once. And uh, in that daemon, we can automatically kill that daemon when MATLAB exits. So that's not a problem for you. And it's really fast enough for interactive use. It's not a problem at all for just calling these functions and just you know, a second overhead, maybe. So what does matdaemon.jl actually look like and how do you call it? So the matdaemon API is very simple. It's one MATLAB function, jl call.m. And it takes three important arguments and then some other keyword arguments we'll uh, talk about in a second. So the first is a Julia expression to evaluate and then call. So this can be any expression that evaluates to a function. It's wrapped in a let block and eval in the global scope. So in this case, it's sort, so you don't have to qualify that name with base.sort because it's exported. And then the next argument that you'll take will be the positional arguments that are passed to sort. So in this case, it's a cell array. Rather, in all cases, you must pass a cell array. In this case, it's a cell array of just a single matrix or a two by five matrix. And lastly, this takes some keyword arguments and we pass those as a MATLAB struct. So it's key value pairs, so in Julia syntax, or nomenclature, it's the keyword args are key one, value one, key two, value two, this passes a MATLAB struct. And that's it. So here we pass the dimensions or dims keyword to sort with the value two. And note that you need to explicitly convert to integer because in MATLAB two is by default to float. And what we get out is this sorted array sorted along the second dimension, sorted along the columns. So it's increasing the columns just as we might expect. For a more complex and general example, uh, these are some of the more important flags available in jail call. So suppose you want to call my function located in my project with these arguments, arg1 and arg2, and key1 and value1. What you do is you can pass the path to your project. Note that you must manage your own Julia dependencies and so make sure your project is instantiated so that it can be loaded. Next, you can pass a setup script. So suppose there's some setup code that you want to run before this, maybe set up some helper functions, things like this. Uh, and then you specify the modules to load. These are loaded with import, not using. So all functions must be explicitly qualified unless you say using my package in the setup code, for example, then they'll be available. Uh, you can set some threads. So you can set the Julia threads to auto or a specific number if you need that. And if in case daemon mode server gets into a bad state, you can restart it with restart equals true. And that's it. So then this will activate your project. It will load my project and linear algebra. And then once uh, it will uh, make sure Julia is restarted with the correct number of threads, and it will call my function with these arguments and these values. And that's it. So thanks for listening to my talk. Uh, please check out the mattdaemon.jl documentation for more information on the other arguments and uh, have fun translating to Julia. Thanks.